Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are watching today, we are going to be looking at how you can get the best out of your prescribing course. Like always, subscribe, like and share the channel because I want to make sure the content we're producing is something that you can enjoy, you can share and get value. Because today's topic is going to be a lot about time management and that's something that we all have the same. So come and follow me and let's make a difference in this world. To make sure that we don't forget everything that I intend to cover, I've got this beautiful friend of mine. You probably can't read it and I don't expect you to read it, but this is going to make sure that we stay on track. And the video today is all about making sure you can get the best out of your prescribing course. Because there's one thing going into something without preparation and there's one thing when you're absolutely prepared. And I always make reference to my colleague, my friend, I was going to say lover, I don't know if he's my lover, but my friend, my colleague Farouk. And he's always telling me that before you do anything, please make sure you prepare. And it's the same journey. Everything we're talking about is going to be exactly this. And that is, how do you prepare for this prescribing course? We're going to be talking about two things. And each topic is going to get broken down into separate subsections. Number one is this whole learning in practice time, this 90 hours of supervision. That's the first thing we're going to be talking about. Then after that, and I'm just going to remind myself, we're going to be talking about post-qualification. So it's not just about preparing for the course, but it's also about preparing for the qualification itself. Now, for those of you who are wondering, what is this non-medical prescribing course? What is this all about? Well, basically, as you know, if you're a prescriber and you have a relevant experience, you can now gain a prescribing qualification. And this is where you can now legally prescribe prescriptions within your competency. And what I want to explain to you today is how do we make sure that you're prepared? How do we make sure that you get the best out of your course? And as we can see, my colleague is walking around because she doesn't want to come in front of camera and she's smiling. But my other colleague always loves the camera and Bilal is always loves an opportunity to get in front of that camera. Bilal, say hello. There we hello. go. Fantastic. He's happy. We're keeping busy. So let's get back to it. Let's talk about the course requirements first. Number one, in order to get the best out of this course, you've got to understand the course structure. Let me say that again. In order to get the best out of this course, you must understand the course structure. And there's certain elements of the course structure which need to be prepared in advance. First of all, it's your learning in practice time. Some of you might know this as 90 hours of supervision. Number two, and let's have a look, we have essay writing. Because remember, this is an academic qualification. So there is going to be some form of academic assessment. And here, some universities have this requirement for you to write an essay and so on. Number three, we have this portfolio. For those of you who don't know, or for those of you who don't know what a portfolio is, it's essentially demonstrating everything you've done in that time. So you're writing down, I did this, I did this, and this is what I learned. This is what I've improved on. This is what I need to improve. So that can be thought of as the evidence that you really managed to do what you were supposed to do within the course itself. Then we have certain reflections. And for those of you who don't know what reflections are, that's essentially what you're doing every single day. Imagine you're going out with your wife or your colleague for dinner and you're now reflecting on how that dinner went. How did you do in the dinner? Well, not how did you do, how did you feel about the dinner? How was the preparation for the dinner? Did you enjoy the dinner? This is all about reflecting how things went. And as a prescriber, we do that all the time. How did you feel about that prescribing? Did you diagnose it properly? Did you feel anxious? Did you feel you managed to give value to your patients? So this is what the university is wanting you to do, is to be able to reflect. And you're doing it all the time. Even when you're watching this video, you're reflecting. Did I waste my time watching Fahim? Or did I get value out of watching this video today? So you're reflecting all the time. And then we're going to talk about presentation, because again, the universities will expect you to deliver a presentation. So you have to prepare for that. And I'm stood in front of you today. It's taken time to be able to present like this. It's not something that's happened one day, it's taken practice. So even when you're delivering your presentations, there is an element of practice that has to be done and we'll be talking about all of that. Then we'll talk about the post-qualification and that is what happens once you've got your qualification. So you've got this piece of paper that says that you can, well, it doesn't say on this, but let's say it said I can legally prescribe. Then we've got to think about what do you do afterwards? How do you make sure that you're still learning? How do you make sure that you're safe? How do you make sure that you can utilize the qualification itself? And we'll touch on that briefly later on. 
the first thing that I'd like to touch on is this learning in practice. So what the GPAC says, for you to gain this qualification, you need to do sufficient learning in practice. And the number is 90 hours. So you have to complete 90 hours of supervision with a designated prescribing practitioner. And for those of you who are struggling to find a supervisor, get in touch with us at Medlin. We are more than happy to help you and we're happy to take you on that journey so you can get the best out of your course. But in this 90 hours of supervision, essentially what you're doing is you're making sure that the training that you have, you can put in practice. Now, you've got my colleague here, Zushama, who's essentially, let's say, dispensing some medicine. And let's say I teach her how to dispense some medicine. Zushama, you can say hello to the camera. Hello. There you go, she's happy. The learning and practice will be observing her to make sure she's doing it properly. Giving her feedback to make sure she's doing it properly. That's what learning and practice is. So imagine you as a prescriber and you are, you've chosen an area and your area might be that I will practice on prescribing for UTIs. You have to demonstrate to the university that you're safe in doing this. Because the university course is not designed to teach you clinical skills. Very important to remember that the university course is not designed to teach you clinical skills. The university course is designed to make sure that you have the skills and you can safely prescribe. Let me repeat that again. For all of you who are watching this video today and you're thinking that once I've enrolled on a course, I will get taught everything by university, that is a big, big cross. The university course is designed to make sure that what you're saying, that you're competent, that you are competent. That's what the university course is designed. And the learning and practice is essentially demonstrating that everything that you're saying is true. What's going to happen in this time? Number one, you're going to be sitting with your doctor. Your doctor should be ensuring that you're getting enough supervision. So let's say we pick a topic like hypertension. What should happen in your learning and practice is you should watch the doctor diagnose a patient with hypertension, watch the doctor treat a patient with hypertension, watch the doctor follow up a patient with hypertension, and once that's happened, we reverse the roles, where you will be doing the action, and the other person or the supervisor will now be supervising. You will be diagnosing, you will be treating, you will be managing, you will be referring, you will be doing the follow-up. This is the learning and practice. So what you should be thinking from here is, wait a second, in order for me to get the best out of the learning and practice, I need to have some core underlying or underpinning knowledge. That is, you should know how you take a history. Number one. Number two, you should know how to undertake a physical examination. So let's touch on this first. Before you do your learning and practice, you should know how you take a thorough history. And for those of you who don't know what a history is, that's essentially gathering information from the doctor itself. Oh, let's repeat that. For those of you who don't know what a history is, that is you gathering information from the patient. Let's say I have a patient who presents with shortness of breath. I need to be able to make sure that I can gather that information from the patient to make that diagnosis. Because a shortness of breath could be caused by a pneumonia, a pneumothorax, a pulmonary embolism, exacerbation of asthma, COPD, could be a range of conditions that can cause a shortness of breath. So you have to be able to gather that information from that patient or take a history and then reach the diagnosis. And I would say as a minimum, if you're looking to undertake your prescribing course as a minimum, you should know how you carry out a history, number one. Number two, you should also know how you take a history in chest pain, shortness of breath, cough, palpitations, so that's one area. Let's move to the head and neck. Let's talk about earache, discharge from the ear. Let's talk about ringing the ear. Let's talk about the eyes, eye pain. Let's talk about the throat. You should know about throat pain. You should know also, let's start to move down. Let's look, talk about, for example, UTIs. People who say that they have difficulty when they urinate or excessive urination. You should take a history in this. And then dermatology and then even headaches. So as a basic, you should know how you gather history generally, but also how you take a history in those areas. So once you've learned how to take a history, that means when you're spending time with your doctor, you can focus on him or her giving you the experience that they have because you know already how to take a history. They're not teaching you how you take a history. 
that's going to take time out of your learning and practice. So that's the first thing you need to know how to do. Then a physical examination. So you should know how to assess various body systems. For example, head and neck, respiratory, abdominal, cardiovascular, peripheral vascular, musculoskeleton, neuro, and so on. So again, it's very, very important that you can undertake this physical examination. Because when we talk about reaching a diagnosis, we have to know what? We have to know the signs and symptoms. And they could be just something that we gather from the patient. But you also have to know what you find on examination. And if you don't have that ability to take a history or to examine, how will you reach the diagnosis? So these are the two things that you must practice before you do your course. Some of you might say, well, Fahim, where do I get that practice from? Again, if you're unsure, get in touch and I can advise you. My colleague can help you. At Medlum, we're more than happy to help you and give you advice. Now, for those of you who are thinking, well, actually, I'm already on a course or I have a place on the course, what do I do? Then make sure you have that conversation with your doctor and identify this as a learning need, that I need to learn how to take a history, I need to learn how to examine. For those of you who would like a book, I would say on history taking Bates is a good book. So go on to Google, type in Bates Clinical History Taking Physical Examination, definitely worth a look. Another book will be by McLeod, so McLeod, so I don't know how you pronounce it properly. Again, history taking physical examination is there. So they're good two books that you can have a look at for your history taking and physical examination. And there's also some good videos online as well that you can have a look at, which can certainly help you. And at MedLearn, we've also got a range of courses that can help you get up to scratch with your history taking and your physical examination. Now, you know how to take a history, you know how to examine. Then it's the case of having a conversation with your doctor or your designated prescribing practitioner also used to be known as a designated medical practitioner and you should explain to them I can take a history, I can examine, I want to focus on actually doing with the patients, I want to be involved in the actual doing with the patients, I want to be involved in that diagnosis. Now how do you do this? Internal medicine. So what is internal medicine? Internal medicine will teach you everything you need to know about the diseases. It will teach you the incidence, the age, the sex, the geography, etiology, pathology, macroscopic, microscopic, signs, symptoms, treatment, prognosis and guidelines. So you need to be reading the internal medicine books. Which books? Harrison's a good example. Again, it's a very big textbook, but Harrison's a good example. Have a look at Harrison's. That can help you with internal medicine. Because again, the non-medical prescribing course is not designed to teach you clinical skills. It's designed to see that you already have the clinical skills, you can demonstrate that you're competent and you're getting signed off. So if you can't take a history, you can't examine, you don't have the knowledge on internal medicine, meaning you can't diagnose, then how will you get the best out of the course? Again, prepare for this. Start to learn about disease states. Start to learn about history taking. Start to learn about examination skills. It will help you. And internal medicine is very, very important. Because think about it. When you want to diagnose something, Let's talk about conjunctivitis. How do we know a patient who has sticky eyes has conjunctivitis or doesn't have a different condition like blepharitis? Because you already know that with conjunctivitis, there might be pus, there might be a gritty sensation, it can be bilateral. Again, you might know something about the age range, it's more common in this age range. There might be certain risk factors that can help. When you have that theoretical knowledge, you're then comparing that knowledge with the patient and then you're matching together and saying, right, this is what the cause is. Let's talk about, for example, chest pain. A chest pain could be caused by heart failure, heart attack, musculoskeleton. It could be a range of other things. For example, even something like gourd or abdominal can cause chest pain. How do you then know that the chest pain is a heart attack? Because you know, if you're having a heart attack, you might have severe pain, the pain may be worse when you exercise, you might have someone who's now sweating and is showing signs of severe pain, they might have a family history of heart attacks. How do you differentiate that with someone who's having abdominal pain or just reflux? Because a reflux may happen when you eat food, heavy meals, stress, but it's not there all the time. That's why you can now compare the heart attack, you can compare the heart attack, you can also compare the abdominal pain or the reflux and 
someone behind me is making faces. I'm not too sure why she's trying to put me off on my video. And you can make that face. Let's have a look at that face you made. You don't want to make that face now? But she's not making face now. But she was making both of these two actually. Both of them. Now, now you're both not turning around. We're making faces. Yes, you're looking innocent, but you were making a face as well. I don't know why they're making faces, but they're trying to put me off. Let's get back to the topic itself. Internal medicine. And Bilal is smiling as well, so they're all having a good time, which is great. But the internal medicine point was, in order for you to reach a diagnosis, you have to know your theory. And internal medicine, which is Harrison's, will help you with that because it will give you the theory. And then you're taking a history and you're comparing and contrasting to find the patient's story. So that's the preparation that you have to do. Because then, imagine this, you can take a history, you can examine, and you know your internal medicine. Imagine the time you're spending with the doctor now. He's just observing you. He just sat there like this. And he's watching you take a history. He's watching you examine. He's watching you explaining to him that this could be a pneumothorax. This could be a heart attack. This could be costochonditis or whatever it might be. And this is why I think it's a pneumothorax. This is why I think it's not this. Doctor, what do you think? Have I missed anything? Now that is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful and that's the level you want to get to because only then can you extract the information from your supervisor. That's why the preparation is key. And you might be like Fahim, that's a lot to learn. That is true. But that's why you're on a journey. That means on a journey you go forward and back. But ultimately the vector is moving forward. You're always going to keep moving forward. And remember in life the key thing is to push yourself make a difference in not only your lives and everybody else's life but always always move forward and stay positive life is too short man has gone onto the moon the non-medical prescribing course is not difficult so don't worry about that too much now once you've done the learning and practice essay writing and i get a lot of students get in touch who really panic about essay writing and we've had requests from some people say could you write your essays for me and i'm laughing because i was like i probably could write your essay for you but it's not something I really want to do. And, and it's, it's like, you need to prepare for this, but it's not your fault. Because for some of you who are undertaking this course, you may have been qualified for seven years, eight years, nine years. You've not done academic work. And we can forget how to write an essay. So again, I would send, I've put some points down with your essay writing. Number one, I'm not getting paid by Grammarly, but I think you should have access to, to Grammarly if you can. Okay, I don't know what happened with my colleague right there, but he was pressing something on the on his iPhone and that really put me off. But let's get back to it again. Let's talk about essay writing here. So, a lot of you get in touch and say, Fahim, could you write your essays for me? Could you check my spelling for me? I don't have to do this. You can get your spelling and grammar checked by Grammarly. So have a look at Grammarly. There's a free version that will help you to make sure that your essay writing is good. So Grammarly is important. Secondly, I would say, in order to get the best at your essay writing is read. Plenty of reading. You must read all the time. And I'm always telling my colleagues, what do I say? Read. Always read and study. So it's really important to make sure that you're reading and studying all the time. That will help with your essay writing. That will improve your English. So make sure you're reading all the time. Do you have a book that you can recommend? Any book? Okay, so apparently when she reads, she sleeps. So that, that's no use. So, Deja, do you like reading books? Not really. No? Look at that. Bilal, do you like reading books? Okay, good. Sometimes. But as you can see, Farooq, do you like reading books? Farooq loves reading books. An actual fact, Farooq, Farooq was the one who actually explained to me that you need to read more. There's one thing watching and there's one thing listening, but reading is amazing and it will help you with your essay writing and English and so on. So make sure that you're reading all the time. So that's really important. So to improve on your essay writing, number one, Grammarly. Number two, make sure that you're reading. That will help with the essay writing. And also, the universities have plenty of support, a support structure in place. They have libraries in place that can really help you because some of you struggle with referencing. Again, YouTube has plenty of information on referencing. So make sure that you're up to scratch with your referencing and essay writing because that will help you. And if you're unsure, speak with the universities. They have plenty of areas that can help you with the university courses itself and this whole academic area. So Grammarly, reading books, essay writing, get in touch with the university. Keep that in mind. And then it's your portfolio. Your portfolio is essentially where you are mapping yourself against the Royal Pharmaceutical Society prescribing competency framework. All this is, is you have a standard. 
For example, Farooq has set a standard for me. He said, look Fahim, if you're going to be in front of the camera, I need you to make sure that you're positive. I need you to look a certain way. And I remember about a year ago, he said, mate, you need to lose weight because I'm not happy with you being on the camera the way you are. That's the standard that he set. I have to make sure that I map myself against the standard. So that would mean that I have to look a certain way. I have to demonstrate that same thing with you as a prescriber. Some of the competency framework might be making sure that you are always learning all the time, up to date. You have to be able to demonstrate that, that you're doing that. How do you do that? You'd say, well, actually, I'm always, I've subscribed to certain articles, journals. I'm attending certain CPD sessions. So that's really, really important. That's how you map yourself against. Maybe one of the framework requirements might be that you can undertake a thorough history. How do you map yourself? Well, you'll say, actually, I've demonstrated to my designated prescribing practitioner that I can take a history. I've developed a document that demonstrates how I take a history. I have videos showing me taking an examination. So the mapping and portfolio is really, really important. So in preparation, please, number one, visit an article that I did that is about the Royal Pharmaceutical Society competency framework and how to map yourself. And number two, read the framework itself. Get in touch or speak with the university to explain to you how you can map yourself. So portfolio is going to be important. Now, let's briefly recap what we've discussed. Number one, what we've discussed, we've spoken about the course requirements. We've spoken about 90 hours supervision. We've spoken about essay writing. We've spoken about your portfolio. Then we have reflections. And this is something that I really struggle with. Because you need to be able to critically think and you need to be able to undertake reflections. And a lot of students don't know what critical thinking is and reflective writing is. But I will give you a website, and I wrote it now, which I think you should visit. It's called, and exactly what is it? Caringpractitioner.co.uk and forward slash critical thinking. Search it on Google, you'll find it. If you can't, I'll try to leave it in the in the area below on YouTube, I don't know what it's called, in the comment section or in the description, I'll leave that link there. Have a look at that. That will explain to you exactly how to critically think, reflective writing, because the university will expect you to do this in that set manner. And at this point, I want to thank my colleague, my mentor, Lizzie Mills. And she actually showed me in terms of a very beautiful website that can help me because I struggle as well. So thank you, Lizzie, if you're watching this, we really appreciate this. Thank you very much for sharing that piece of writing. So, I've explained to you about reflective writing. Now let's talk about the presentation. The last piece is your presentation. How do you deliver a presentation? Number one, know your topic very well. So if it's hypertension, make sure you know hypertension very well. If it's a UTI, make sure you know your UTI very well. If it's diabetes, know your diabetes very well. Number two, make sure that you speak with the university and find out what their marking criteria is. Asking for their miking, uh, miking, asking for their marking criteria, but also ask them for previous student examples, because that can help you as well. Ask them for previous student examples. So that's going to be important. So make sure you know your topic well. What else have I written? I've written understand the university needs, and make sure you have a conversation with your tutors to help you. So to summarize, if you want to get the best out of your prescribing course, you have to prepare. How are you going to prepare? Number one, you're going to learn how to take a history. Number two, you're going to learn how you take or undertake an examination. Number three, you're going to learn internal medicine. Once you've done that, you're going to start reading more books. You're going to make sure that you have a good understanding of essay writing by having a look at Grammarly because that will help with your grammar. It can check it all for you. The portfolio, if you've done these steps right, your portfolio will be fairly straightforward because you'll be able to map yourself against, against the Royal Pharmaceutical Society framework. Again, fairly straightforward because I've got a wonderful article that you should read and also visit the RPS website and have a look at that as well. For reflective writing, I've given you a good website. Again, shout out to Lizzie Mills for providing that information. And last to your presentation, don't be scared, be confident, be brave, learn your topic well and you can make a difference. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I want to thank Farooq for all the hard work that he puts in, everything he's done, because I'm very difficult to live with. So I can be very awkward. So thank you, Farooq, for doing it. I really appreciate it. And my team, let's together build a better world. Let's make a difference. I love you all. I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. Thank you for watching.